Hello and welcome to the Breaking Bitcoin Market Update. It's Crypto Jack coming to you live once again this January 18th, 2021. It's a Monday, guys. Time to get this week rolling after a pretty awesome weekend of altcoin gains. I'm sure there's quite a lot, quite a few people here in the live chat who are probably appreciating the look of their altcoin portfolio this morning. <laughs> Of course, so. let's discuss this. And all right, uh, today we've got uh, two of our analysts with us, Alex and Jason. Alex, how are you doing today? I am fantastic today. How are you guys doing? Can't complain. Good morning, crypto family. Bringing some of that Ty Pennington energy to it. Uh, uh, he, he tried, but Jason is sick as a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jason. Don't you don't you alienate me? It was a good weekend with friends away from the charts, no worries, but we had a lot of banger alt trades that hit a lot of TPs over the weekend, so I cannot complain. I st certainly feel like Jason deserves the opportunity to celebrate, so <laughs> hats off to you, sir. Well, perhaps did a little bit too much of it this weekend, but what can you do? Oh, you like it. Uh, I mean, looking over it just briefly, we pulled 24% out of REN, we pulled 23% out of ENJ, other ones are still riding at no loss positions, so feeling very good about the situation we got the uh, the premium group into right now. So, Wow, solid gainers over uh, on the premium not complain. on the premium trade board. So well done to our analysts. Uh, Let's be honest, the, the market's making it a little easy on us. Yeah, so that right. doesn't mean that we're we're still not killing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we uh, we're definitely in a good spot in the market right now. This is a great uh, opportunity mm -hmm. uh, that probably comes around only uh, maybe once every four years. Tough to say, but what exactly the timing of the alt cycles is, but. It's, we're here and we're nailing it. Yep, we're here. We're doing it. We're doing it live. We're doing it big. This is just how it goes here at CC. It's and kind I'm of sure the thing that it's hard to stress the most is because we are literally doing it live. Like if anyone's thinking that this is any kind of a scam or a scheme or anything like that, just just pay attention to what we're doing, guys. Like it's yep. it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, this isn't your average pump and dump group in crypto. And this is an actual professional traders group where. Uh, we do this for real, and we remain accountable. Definitely mm -hmm. a hallmark of cracking crypto around here. Always a pleasure. All right, let's take a look what we got happening today. Bitcoin mostly sideways, currently sitting currently sitting around 35,760. Not too bad. Quite a bit of ranging. Things are kind of exciting if you like to scalp a bit. Uh, but we're still hanging up there. See seemingly the uh, the pullback to 20,000 doom is off, and it's given alts the room they need to run. And you know we've been talking about alt season around the corner for a couple of days, couple of weeks now for sure. And uh, you know we were basically calling it officially. Alt season's the, here. L let the, the games signs begin. The signs reporting to alt gains, guys, and we were talking about it, and here they are. I mean, indeed, here they are. So taking a quick. Don't lie. Quick look at crypto bubbles this morning. Ample fourth, one of the top gainers uh, in the last 24 hours, up 16 and a half percent. Beyond that, we've got similar gains from Neo. Neo up similar 16 percent. I see OMG up 8 percent. Miyota up 10 percent. Uh, Kusama, I think, following in the wings of the big dot pump dot, went absolutely ballistic this weekend. I think it tapped almost 20 bucks, if I'm not mistaken, or like 19. Um, really now? Yeah, Dot that. Dot is looking wild, guys. So, um, Kusama... Still pissed off you don't have a bag? <laughs> yeah, but, uh, you know, the rest of my portfolio is looking hella frothy, so I I'm not complaining. Maybe uh, once I flip some of my bags uh, in for profit, I'll move some of it into oh, yeah. Dot would be the idea that we're looking at. Right. Um, but yeah, quite a few uh, big gainers of the day between Zen and even Huobi Token is up about 10% today. A few losers, including ESD, which is down a solid 21% percent curve down nearly 11 percent otherwise it's pretty good out there be sure in the live chat to, to let us know if your alt bags are looking as good as i'm describing them this morning of course it's kind of a uh, it's going to be an interesting week 
you know, in the global scheme of things, in the on the on, on the U.S. front, yes, that is looking like it's gonna might be further drama to play out, but we're gonna keep our eye on that. Beyond that, it's just uh, you know, just lean back and enjoy the the alt season. Let me uh, let me turn the music down just a touch because it seems a Don't little overthink loud. it. Let your runners run. Yeah, things are looking good though. I I do give it that. All right, let me uh. Whoops, looks like we uh, do adjustments here. I probably shouldn't have. Here we go. All right, back back in business. Here we go. And let's take a quick look at the news articles we have lined up today. What is trending, you ask? Well, I have the answer right here. A couple interesting stories. So uh, first one here is uh, we had a couple of high profile people come out in support of uh, Bitcoin. One of them being this uh, former U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers, who um, talked about Bitcoin last week, last Friday. He made comments saying why wow, the price continue will continue probably to climb. And so he's one of the top uh, top U.S. economists. He was the 71st Secretary of the Treasury during the Clinton admin. And he had comments he made last Friday while being interviewed on Bloomberg's TV Wall Street Week. And near the interview, uh, Weston asked Summers if Bitcoin is in a bubble. And to which uh, former Treasury, Treasury Secretary Summers replied, I'm not going to predict the fluctuations over the next six months, but I think some institutions like it. It's here to stay. I don't think that the whole thing is going to collapse. I think that having a run up and the run way down and then the move back up, it looks much more resilient. And therefore, I think people are going to move toward it and people move towards it, given the finiteness of the supply. That's going to be a factor working to raise prices. So fundamentally bullish it's be a statement. Larry Summers, price goes up, price goes down, price comes up again. It's good. It is good. Yeah, it's certainly yeah, sound resilient. It's good. Everybody was calling it a bubble that popped, you know, after the 17 bull run. But, you know, now that we've returned, we're back. Bubble's and, inflated again. <laughs> yeah, we're back at the... And, yeah, and you know what it did after the bubble? It pulled back about 80, 85%, and then it made new highs. Exactly. That's odd. It's like we've it's like we've talked about that before. Yeah. Parabolic movements. Mm. All right, here Maybe we have... An, to something, Watson. Here we have another uh, somewhat high-profile evangelist. Uh, this is coming from my neck of the woods. So this is former Prime Minister of Canada, Stephen Harper, uh, who's also an economist. Uh, is that your boy? Yeah, he's my boy for sure. Uh, he's a skeptic <laughs> of monetary stimulus, suggests that the next stop uh, in the current economic crisis is a sovereign debt default. Damn. Mm -hmm. pretty, see that pretty based dude uh, Stephen Harper in an online conference call talked about the differences between the current recession and the 08 crisis Harper said uh, raised uncertainty around the continued demand for US dollars at prolonging low interest rates uh, he's taking a bit of an alternative take than uh, what we kind of sometimes discuss on here and as confidence in the dollar weakens Harper mentioned Bitcoin reserves with central banks alongside gold yeah so he even went as far as saying that he he could see future governments holding uh, Bitcoin as collateral. How long will the world loan trillions of dollars at 0% to the US, asked Stephen Harper. Uh, while Harper himself doesn't hold any Bitcoin, he acknowledged its rising significance Liar. as an inflationary hedge. Yeah, right on. So, um, um, the bubbles are everywhere, said Harper. Um, in this scenario, the current debt of an overhang dwarfs 0809, and like the effects of that crisis, Harper mm -hmm. predicts a series of sovereign debt crises like Greece, Italy, and Portugal. Yeah, we haven't really seen that come back to roost uh, in recent months or recent years since the 08 crisis. But I remember, like this is the, that was the context from which bitcoin emerged so who's to say uh you know that kind of uh, narrative won't be here with returning and bitcoin might very well be capitalizing on that so let's see here for harper three key features for an asset to qualify as money our unit of account meaning even exchange and a store of value <coughs> according to him bitcoin qualifies as the first two yet lacking intrinsic value. I don't know as a store of value what I'm holding in Bitcoin as a major reserve on my balance sheet. 
Still, uh, he maintains that Bitcoin can be a newfound global image of inflationary hedge and will help determine the next phase of acceptance with central banks and institutions. All right. Well, completely agree. You know, two two former um, policy, well, one a prime minister, one a treasury, treasury secretary, uh, but both seemingly giving positive statements on behalf of Bitcoin. So uh, kind of interesting to come out of that front. And beyond that, uh, let's talk another high-profile figure, Goldman Sachs, set to enter crypto markets soon with a custody place as a source. So this is, a, I guess, custody is a big thing uh, for these institutions to conquer in order to kind of uh, really take on the next, the next uh, Bitcoin era. So well, US that makes a lot of sense. I mean, imagine if you're a business and you're thinking of all those people who've lost their keys and can't access their crypto anymore. You think, oh, my God, I don't trust any of my coworkers to hold these keys. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't even trust myself. You know, gosh, what if we lose the $100 million keys? I, I, you know, it's happened in a few uh, cases, although, I mean, it's questionable. Were they lost, stolen? But anyway. Yeah. Uh, so having... So knowing that like, Goldman Sachs is going to hold on to our Bitcoins, guys, we can invest in Bitcoins and Goldman Sachs is just going to, they're going to have custody. They're going to hold it. We're going to pay them a small fee. We're going to have to worry about the keys. We don't have to worry about it getting hacked or stolen because Goldman Sachs, they have all that insurance and stuff. You know, they can, well, they probably declare bankruptcy if they were hacked, but you know, a anyway, it's a much better solution to have, uh, you know, uh, institutional custody. If you're a business, then, you know, have, you know what your accountant co-worker who sometimes screws up payroll what he's going to be in charge of the bitcoin keys that guy you know parties too much yeah, yeah. absolutely you definitely <laughs> need to develop uh, like a very robust framework and best practices um mm -hmm. if you're going to hold any significant amounts of bitcoin you can imagine you know the micro strategies of the world when they're sitting on a billion dollars worth of this stuff uh they really got to think long and hard about how they store it how they manage it um and it's uh, again maybe a bit of a hurdle um, for them to overcome, but again might might open the gates to to the next big era in Bitcoin. Uh, so yeah, global banking powerhouse Goldman Sachs issued a request for information to explore digital asset custody, according to source inside the bank. When asked about the timing, Goldman Sachs said the bank's custody plans would be evident soon. All right. Digital asset custody was circulated to at least one well-known crypto custody player toward the end of 2020. I wonder who that could be. Maybe Backed, maybe some other one that's developed um, a pretty good tech on this front. Like JP Morgan, we've issued an uh, RFI looking for digital custody. We're broadly exploring digital custody and deciding what the next step is, said the Goldman source, who has not to be named. All right, so just like JP Morgan, Goldman throwing their hat in the ring, they just really want to have this custody, this custodial business uh, um, figured out, I guess, because um, Lord you knows you don't want to make forever, a man. Banks are going to have to adapt, adapt or die, man. Yeah, you know, it's kind of like seeing it. it's kind of like building, you know, a big, big vault for your new your new gold uh, mm -hmm. s storage purposes. Right. I'm sure they have that we can actually audit. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they spend millions of dollars engineering the vault and they have security companies go over it and audit every last security measure, you know, mm -hmm. between the alarm company and like the the access control, you name it. All that has got to be figured out by experts. Bitcoin's something similar, although more in the purely digital sense. But still, you know, you probably have to account for risks like, uh, you know, uh, will a meteor impact your your corporate headquarters and take the vault with it potentially? Should we not spread the keys out maybe internationally to some other uh, underground storage facilities that we control, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Everybody who touches this stuff, will they be how how you know how far will we go to vet them, et cetera? But still pretty interesting. The writing's on the wall, guys. This is uh, climbing in uh, in profile. All right. And there's the no chance of Bitcoin ever going to zero, or at least not in, not in the next five to ten years at this rate. There's just too much institutional adoption. They'll never mm. let it happen because they're invested in it now. So whenever anybody says, is there any chance of Bitcoin going to zero? I can confidently say there's no chance of Bitcoin going to zero. Even if it got banned by the U.S. government, it wouldn't go to zero. It would take a huge hit. I, I, I have yeah. no idea what price go down to, but it wouldn't go to zero. There's just too much adoption right now. Mm -hmm. uh, that You cannot say the same for most other cryptos. Uh, maybe that's true for uh, ETH at this point. I know uh, now that there's, uh, you know, there's ETH 
Uh, there's you know the grayscale eth, and there's uh, back is an eth, and there's CME eth. Institutions are in eth too, but for basically any other crypto, yeah, it could totally go to zero. But not Bitcoin mm-hmm. in it. And that's why they're the only cryptos that I'm willing to say, like, you could have a long-term investment in this crypto. In anything mm-hmm. else, you're gambling. You're, you're, there's just too many future unknowns to, yeah. to hold any other crypto for, like, three to five years. Indeed. That's maybe, a- maybe Link. Maybe, that's a- uh, you know, a few other big ones. Perfect segue for the next story, the final news story we're going to highlight this morning, and that's uh, hedge fund predicts $115,000 Bitcoin, but the fall of so-called speculative altcoins. So a little bit of a warning here, um, you know, a bit of a, a Bitcoin and Ethereum hopium, but uh, a bit of bad news potentially for alts. So just something to bear in mind. So according to analysts, I think this was from Pantera Capital, which is a bit, uh, I'm sure, has its own heavy uh, bias toward the majors. But analysts over at Pantera say Bitcoin and Ethereum's growing dominance of the crypto market are signals that the current bull market is drastically different than the last one. Indeed, something we've been describing here on the show that this, this bull run seems a little different than 17. Uh, more of the quality, I think, is rising to the top, and uh, even it's got more of a backbone. There's a lot more support here. Yeah, even even with DeFi being kind of a flimsy, flimsy, um, I don't know, uh, play in this space, um, still seems significantly better than all the tokenized projects of uh, the 17 run. But yes, according to coin. according to new data from Pantera. The investment in hedge fund firm suggests that Bitcoin's current price action is closely following the stock to flow model's trajectory. Ooh, that's what I'd love to hear. And the firm analysts believe Bitcoin will reach 115,000 by, get this, the 1st of August 2021. Are you guys ready Boom, for a $100,000 Bitcoin this year? I know I am. And I probably. It said 2021. Uh, August said by, by August first. Uh, it doesn't say 2021 wow. in this article, but I'm presuming it's exactly what they mean because that's pretty much what the stock to flow model puts the price at. Very interesting. If we just take one look at this chart here, yep, stock to flow puts it at around 118k, and so that's what Pantera is gunning for. They are certainly okay. helping shill the bags and uh, pump pump up the price. Bitcoin's parabolic rally may have placed the price a bit ahead of the model's projection, and this week's 28% correction sent temporary shivers across the market, but sharp corrections and short consolidation periods are characteristics of bull markets, mm-hmm. indeed. You gotta, fill that wall, you gotta fill that white noise, and regardless of how far you're moving, you're gonna get a proportional pullback to it, like we talk about 80% uh, pullbacks from parabolic moves and stuff like that. Now that we're getting up into these higher numbers, we're gonna start seeing $8,000, $10,000 swings, man. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm gonna I'm gonna start riding that volatility up and down. Ooh, yeah. I'd like to scalp a bit uh, in the next few months in order to really take advantage of what's to come. Although, you know, by, I guess that's... Uh, Got to take some risks doing that. With that said, um, yes. Yeah, so for. this article basically describes the uh, the stock to flow model and um, the four year of course happening cycle. So really rehashing old information, but it's just getting those bullish juices flowing on a Monday. You know, while while alts run and Bitcoin kind of hangs around the mid 30s. You know, maybe some people forgot what what's really afoot here. So this might just be a gentle reminder. Don't forget to hold some BTC, some Ethereum. Alts are looking great, but uh, as this article describes, it's the sign of a maturing market and one of the significant differences with the overall market composition and where value is located. The majority of the value is currently consolidated in Bitcoin and Ethereum, and institutional investors have so far chosen these two as the established chains to gain exposure to cryptocurrency. And I'm starting to think Polkadot is becoming uh, one of those now. Uh, Polkadot the true becoming, ether- yeah, the true Ethereum killer, huh? The true Ethereum killer on the horizon. I mean, it didn't move up to what the number four spot. Nineteen it- nineteen forty, it hit in price, so it almost doubled. Yeah, I think it hit number four on the coin market cap list. So clearly, that's uh, I can't imagine there, that's not seeing some institutional investment for that type of rally. And let's see here. Uh, this there's another analyst from China. This one says this rally is different. Massive shift from high speculative, non-functioning tokens in 17 to Bitcoin and Ethereum today. Okay, yep. So this is what I've been saying as well. Anybody who's left over after the uh, the, the aftermath of the 17 bull run and crash, 
uh, has probably learned a valuable lesson, and I'm sure a lot of people uh, who walked away from that um, probably, probably wish they just hodled. Yeah, it probably hodled and not messed with with alts as much, right? They learned their lesson, and uh, at least maybe some of them. I'm sure some people probably never do, but uh, still interesting thoughts I think here. The lesson that a lot of people should have taken away is that after you make your money out of alts, get out yeah, take because these things are gonna lose most of their value after the season is over. Indeed, but the seasons only seems to be starting right now, so. Uh, might still be plenty of opportunity to make your alt gains, guys, but don't forget to take your profits and consider cashing out into Bitcoin and Ethereum and, you know, some of those coins that you thought may have been too expensive, ran too fast, too hard. Um, you know, once your once your alts make your 10x, 20x gains this, this season, guys, uh, you know, don't be afraid to move some of that into Bitcoin. You'll likely... Uh, be this the safer place to hold uh, you won't regret it in the medium turn you know with that said I think we are done here I got these few stories mentioned I'm gonna shout out everybody in the live chat and we'll get the show started mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody wants to see all the juicy details regarding uh, the charts let's see here is this is this up to date is my live chat up to date I'm gonna refresh my live chat window double check if everything is good yep looks good all right who is here first super relaxed awesome says what's good everyone super relaxed a channel supporter with the green status awesome nice to have you here super relaxed it's pretty cool because i remember super relaxed like just joined the channel like last week this is like a new hey, you love that name so much i do um they joined the channel like seemed like just a week ago and they're already a channel supporter so that means that that tells Appreciate me appreciate yeah yep must be doing something good around here uh vidush is in here hello good morning good monday so far indeed very good monday so far i'm i'm pretty hyped maybe not so much no jason though jason looks no com no complaints here jason sounds a little rough this monday uh we got s hyatt in here good evening <laughs> ladies <aren't> <laughs> and gents we got uh zaid in the live chat saying a hey, daniel good afternoon money mondays yes good good reminder money Money Mondays yep. is a tradition we try to keep up here on breaking Bitcoin and cracking cryptocurrency. Got a got a got a dollar cast average. Yep. Got to build your portfolio. Mondays Throw is always a good idea. A couple hundred dollars at something. Yep. Every Monday, every one Monday, every month, buy a little something, put it away for good. Just stack it up slowly but surely. Um, mm -hmm. Good way to build up your portfolio. It's mostly what I it's mostly what I utilize Coin Coinbase for. Uh, of course, Daniel also being a green channel supporter. So thank you so much, Daniel. B flows in here. Have altcoins been pumping? Yeah. Did you just wake up? Well, you better check your coin folio, Mr. B flow, because okay. yes, alts have been pumping. David Rice from the UK. Good Is morning, your all. Is refrigerator running? And you better catch it. Boy, uh, that's a classic. Ah, 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 ah. Texas Blues is in here. What's up, CC fam? Safely in my link long from $13. All right. Shout outs to Texas and his uh, $13 link long. My link bags are looking hella swell today as well. Link to 1,000, guys. Yep. Let's do it. Link Marines. Link. Uh, link Marines. Dark Rico is in here. David Rice, I mentioned. Bird in live chat saying Neo looking good. Solid breakout. Yeah, I guess Neo's doing things. We will look at that shortly. Agency, of course, is in here. If we are going to talk about sovereign wealth and monetary issuance, I expect agency to definitely show up and sound off. Uh, maybe a bit of an unorthodox thinker, but I do like what agency is selling. So uh, let's see here. Marco's in here. We have, all right, my text window just jumped. I have to scroll up. We got Marco in here. We got Ron Legato in here. We got Justice Mace. It won't kill Ethereum just yet, but the governance token dot will be able to connect all digital assets together using parachains and relay chains. Indeed, Polkadot looking uh, very, uh, very promising going forward. Maybe not an Ethereum killer, uh, but it certainly, I think, will find a place inside the crypto space very, very soon. Uh, JG, another channel supporter. Isn't this exactly what makes it such a Ponzi? Where does all the money go? Uh, Boris Bitcoin. Hey, guys, thoughts on NEO and privacy perps? We'll take a look at those shortly. Boris, Tech Engine, Astro oh. Rev. NEO has to be doing good. I haven't heard this many people mention it in the chat on the same day. <laughs> agency i mentioned mr ethers in here robert warner nice to see you mr ether quiet weekend indeed it was a quiet weekend i know i said i was going to host ufc saturday night but turned out that ufc was on abc 
and it started in the afternoon. So by the time I logged on in the evening, uh, you see it already run its course. But I don't know if anybody caught that uh, that um, uh, main bout on the UFC. I did not. Who fought? It, um, I'm not good with names, but it was Maxwell versus... Did McGregor fight? No, I think that's next week. Uh, it was probably one of the most epic... I think a lot of people are calling this like fight of the year. One of the best bouts, I think, in, in UFC history, if anything. It was it was quite quite the headliner. So I did watch the replay of it later. It was pretty hot. Anybody watch that? It was awesome. All right, Oil Kemp in here. Let me get through these and get the show started, guys. Loot Patience in here. Last few and nice hash logins in here. Astro Rev, Lucas Bagard, and finally Ancap Futures. All right, nice to see Ancap in here. ETH1 and David Rice. All right, guys, let's get into the show. We've got about an hour and a half left in the show. Should give us plenty of time to run through today's show schedule, which includes. Uh, the uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, the majors, before we dive into alts. Maybe we'll look at Forex a little later. Finally, we will get to the chart requests and the AMA portion of the show by hour two. So I see several people have already had requests come in, such as Link, Band, GRT, and many more. Guys, I'm going to log every last one of them, and we will get to them in a bit. So any comments, any requests you leave. Yeah, Max Holloway, thank you. Um, any comments you leave... I will log them and queue them up for our analysts to go over and review. But that's it for now. I've done enough talking this morning. Let's get into the main scene. And I've got uh, Alex's chart on screen. Alex, take it away. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Yeah. So I have a lot of different ways I'm looking at price right now, which kind of tells me that uh, we're just mostly consolidating at this point so there's a lot of different drawings that i have here i think probably this is what i am looking at the most so this interaction with this trend right here I'm interested in how uh, we're wicking up into this area right here. We keep getting rejected from it. This is a pretty strong rejection wick on the four hour right here. We don't quite have a sell signal yet here. Let's get, let's get baseline in. It'll be helpful for looking at this. I think Alex is bearish, guys. I do feel bearish. I, I'm looking at Ethereum in this spot. Uh, there's a few different ways I have Ethereum drawn out here. So on lower time frames, we have this uh, really clean looking uh, consolidation symmetrical triangle. As you can see, volatility just gets smaller as we just kind of oscillate around this one price right here. Uh, $12 or 1223 So this is a very strong point of control we're building up in this area right here. I, I really feel, at least on Ethereum, that this is a place where we are likely to pull back. As you can see, we're just trapped under the 12-hour baseline right here while we consolidate around this price right below the high. I really want to see Ethereum pull back. I think to either 1050, maybe even 1000, 950. I want to see, I think I want to see Ethereum pull all the way back towards the bottom of this range, which is unretested. So, you know, we, we tested the bottom and then we just kind of wandered up afterwards, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're thinking at least another swing at the lows, if not a break of the low. I think just another swing towards the lows, at yep. least, you know, kind of, this is like one big trading range, but we've only been towards the bottom of this trading range. I mean, we started it. Not very long. We start yeah. the bottom, we start the top. We retest it, and we haven't come down at all back towards this area. And look at all this all this volume right down here that needs to be filled in. We need some points of control, too, just like we made up here. So I, I do want Ethereum to pull back in this spot right here. I think most time frames are bullish, right? You see, we're underneath the four hour here. I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to draw this line right here. But if you look on lower time frames, 
But here, let me let me turn the baseline back off for a minute. Drawing from this wick to this wick. Here, we'll, we'll even zoom in. I guess if you want to look at it this way, we're still inside of here. But if you tighten it up at all. And, and you guys know I don't normally draw from wicks. I, I draw from candle bodies. So uh, to me, I feel like this this overall trend has started to weaken and break down right here, right around this area of the point of control, and we need to kind of retest back down towards the. Uh, so I'd like to see us come back towards a thousand dollars, right, right, right down into this range. Maybe we wick down in this area, maybe we don't, but this is this is where I'm looking for on Ethereum. Mm -hmm. um, Ethereum Bitcoin on lower time frames. Looks a little bit like it's pulling back. I wouldn't necessarily take out a huge short. Like, I'm not sure. But I feel like we, we, we made a high here. We rejected from the highs. You can see we've got a uh, got a little swing failure pattern right here. We make a higher high and a lower high. And we kind of break down below the uh, support. This spot. Broken trend. So... Kind of break down we pull back up retest the highs and then break down towards this area so i think ethereum bitcoin is also uh kind of in agreement here that ethereum is likely to pull back maybe even more significantly than a bitcoin does if bitcoin is pulling back so for bitcoin to pull back towards the bottom of its range is i think much much less this is like yeah 10 percent move let's say 10 percent move and on ethereum like 15 20 percent move so it's good that ethereum bitcoin is looking like it's going to pull back because otherwise we'd be thinking where are we going to get that extra 10 percent from alex you know if ethereum bitcoin is just staying there then it doesn't make a lot of sense but we could have the bitcoin pull back here and ethereum pull back here and ethereum is just like the pullback is just so much bigger because it made it made it made higher highs here it was stronger while bitcoin uh, well, Bitcoin has just basically just been trading sideways all weekend. And mm -hmm. um, I would like to point out to you guys that we told you that on Friday, that Bitcoin is going to be trading sideways, and that alts were going to be the plays all weekend. So Nailed I, it. Hope you guys, yeah, I hope you guys uh, took our advice on that. So, yeah, I, I just I cannot truly decide here what's going on with uh, Bitcoin. I, I like this trend right here. I think it makes sense that we would retest the bottom again, but when you look on lower time frames, you'll see that our downtrend has been getting less and less steep. There's steepness of this downtrend here, slightly less steep slope, less steep, less steep. So I. There's an argument to be made that perhaps we do come up here on Bitcoin, but so far I just, uh, you know, I don't see it. I, I don't really see it, especially because we keep getting rejected. We keep making lower highs. Unlike, unlike Ethereum, there was an argument to be made for Ethereum strength until we made lower high, lower high right here. But um, I, I don't, I just, I just don't see it on any, uh, Look at this! Look at this daily Doji right here. Now we're starting to get really limp. So I, I really do expect this pullback on Ethereum. I, I, I guess I've said enough on Ethereum and Bitcoin here. I wish uh, I wish I had better. Uh, I wish I had something more concrete on Bitcoin. But right now I just see a bunch of sideways, mm -hmm. and, and even the down I see is just still inside of this trading range for right now. We do. We did finally get that weekly sell signal yesterday. We got uh, so th this signal was from September until now. Uh, time transformation was staying the whole time, and now it's telling us to be out. So I do think we're going to see at least a little bit more pullback here. 
I don't know if it's necessarily going to be all the way to 23,000 or 26,000, although we might. Uh, mm -hmm. But I do expect more of a pullback in this spot over the next couple of weeks. Uh, that being said, I, I think there's a really strong shelf of support here on 20K. And if we do end up with a significant pullback, I wouldn't expect much of a pullback below that. Um, Ethereum also on the weekly, giving us that sell signal. So that is good that the weekly is kind of giving us confidence that our daily technical analysis is correct. So we're basically every time frame is telling us, eh, you should probably look for a pullback on Ethereum here. Yeah. And you have a hanging man candle on the weekly. Yep. So I just, even <laughs> if we, hold that, boom, we come down and then maybe we close the week up even. I, I don't know, but I, I'm i seeing this pullback happening here on Ethereum. So it, it's, you know, maybe we even wick up one more time on the daily. I, I, I don't know for sure, but we're coming down here, guys. We're coming back down to... Uh, nine you know to the 900s the low 1000s so i wouldn't put on any degen lungs here on ethereum mm -hmm. let's uh let's go ahead let's zoom out just a little bit and let's let's take a look at the broader uh cryptocurrency market so after essentially after having a an entire week of sideways on Bitcoin dominance, we finally got some heavy moves this week, which is good because that is why alts are taking off. All that money is kind of uh, kind of leeching out of Bitcoin as people take profits and Bitcoin trades sideways. And, you know, they take up all positions and there's so much more money in Bitcoin than there is in the alts that it doesn't take very much for these things to pump very hard off their bottoms especially because uh, a lot of these have been so oversold against Bitcoin, um, as, as I've shown you guys on their Bitcoin pairings. Uh, so for right now, I, I think Bitcoin dominance is telling us that we can continue to expect alts to do well. Uh, no, significant, uh, no significant signs on any lower time frames that we can uh, really expect this to change anytime soon. Even, even on like the four hour, Bitcoin dominance continues pulling back. So... Uh, for right now, alts look great. Bitcoin looks like uh, you should stay away from it. Volatility continues to fall on Bitcoin. And, uh, you know, if you are used to high volatility, you're not going to find it in Bitcoin in this moment. You're going to find that in the alts. So uh, alts, alts, alts at this time. Bitcoin, as you can see, is down today. Uniswap up 2%. Dragon Perp up 4 Interesting. Exchange Perp 3%. Ship perp one and a half, mid perp two, and major alt still kind of languishing. And I gotta say, look ready for a pullback here. It's looking really weak on the 12 hour. You know, where's the strength? Should we be making even more highs, not like <clears throat> going downwards? Decreasing volume, decreasing momentum. Very good point. We do have decreasing volume. The the decreasing momentum I think is obvious. I mean yeah. The candle bodies just start getting smaller, guys. That that's, de that's like the definition of decreasing momentum, right? Yep. So as we can see, like big candle bodies, big, big, uh, medium, medium, small, smaller, red, curling down. So uh, that's that's like the definition of loss of momentum, guys. So uh, I think all coins here are looking like they may get a pullback. We don't we don't have a signal yet. We don't even have the twelve hour signal curled under, but. It's getting there. Hmm. I would say we could have a similar story for all the perps here. Well, you know, if Bitcoin did have a full 10% pullback, that would affect these these perps are USD denominated. So everything would suffer if Bitcoin did pull back here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, alts have gotten a little overbought. Maybe everything just pulls back here just a little bit towards uh, support again, continues onwards. We'll see what happens here. Let's let's look at the lower time frames on these again. Uh, exchange perp feels kind of strong here in this spot. Right now we're holding above. Uh, 
We're kind of holding shot. above. What we, what I guess we would term a resistance and support level. Something's happening at this level. We got resistance. We've got a little bit of support on lower time frames, but it's not necessarily anything we would write home about. Mm -hmm. We could just see a pullback from this level, retest these levels. Even just a small pullback here could be healthy. We'll see. Privacy perp definitely looks like it wants to pull back here on lower time frames, right? Where's where's where'd our higher highs go? Priv perp? Where'd our higher highs go? Higher high, higher high, higher high. And then it just it can't do it anymore. Just can't do it anymore. Daily time frame also kind of petering out here. Um if we made a new high, then I would be, okay, I was wrong about priv perp. It was just reaccumulating. It's We're all in here. Mm -hmm. But if we, if we don't make a new high here, then I'm looking to looking to short this back down in this area too. Exchange perp still looks good here on lower on higher time frames. Mid shit perp we looked at. Ooh. Eh, it's not. It's more like a channel than it is an ascending wedge. It's like not quite there, but I still think it's very interesting, guys. That we uh, we're kind of approaching these levels of resistance with weakness again. We're doing that while Bitcoin looks weak. Ethereum looks weak. Binance Bitcoin doesn't look weak here. Well, then again, exchange coins do look strong. That's the one we were looking at that looked probably one of the strongest ones out of these. Hmm. Well, I think that either way, what the markets are telling us is that right now, even though alts may pull back from the spot, they may or may not. I, I am not sure. I'm not willing to... Uh, I'm not willing to say one way or the other at this point, although uh, the ascending wedges uh, up into resistance look a little interesting. But uh, right now, Bitcoin dominance is telling us that alts are just the better choice for continuing gains going forwards. And even if alts pull back here, the gains that they make will likely be greater than whatever gains Bitcoin does. Because just would be more sideways on Bitcoin. Uh, in, in some ways, we really shouldn't be surprised if we're looking at getting a pullback here on Bitcoin. That's because the Dixie uh, gapped up again today, continues to be strong. It is putting in this kind of interesting looking inverse head and shoulders it is a little inverse head and shoulders esque isn't it a little bit uh and, and and we closed and held above this area that's that's very interesting it's not like we hit this area and then instantly started pulling back you see that mm -hmm. sometimes and you're like okay I am not necessarily saying that we should like all take out USD longs or something like that, but this is really interesting and it's concerning for uh, for Bitcoin and the broader markets, especially because as we were looking at Friday, um, these markets are not back open yet. They're closed for Martin Luther King Day, but we got those sell signals on the Dow Jones. We closed back below this resistance level that we had briefly broken back above. And I was like, oh, well, maybe the Dow will go for it. And then... Then we broke down uh, just just enough on Friday so that we got that weekly sell signal. Uh, same on the SPY. We got the weekly sell signal. We're getting this weekly sell signal as we broke back underneath this resistance level that we've been watching. Excuse me. Am I, I'm still on the Dow. I'm sorry. I didn't actually click SPY. Here you go. Similar story. Not the same story. Let's get our daily baseline. Here we go. Closed Friday underneath the daily baseline. We're getting, uh, we're curled under on our oscillator here, time transformation. And WADA starting to, starting to fire. It's it's not over the dead zone yet. But what I'm telling us is that overall, the daily is more bearish than it is bullish on the SPY. Um, and we have our weekly sell signal here. And on the NASDAQ, that is probably the most bearish of the three. Here we are, not just under resistance, 
under support. We reject from support. At the same time, we reject from the daily baseline. Our the oscillators Q- curled under. We got the water field. That's it. We've talked about this quite a bit. The QQQ has been weaker than all the others, it seems. Yeah. So that's I, I think that's that's it for the QQQ right here. I'm I'm ready to short this when we reopen on Tuesday. We'll see mm-hmm. we'll see what Tuesday looks like. But I think I want to take it back down towards a retest of the weekly highs here. So roughly two ninety or so. So that's that's a not insignificant move for the traditional stock market. It's a good five or six percent move. If we were to retest uh, support. We'd almost be in bear market territory. We would twenty percent is bear market territory in traditional markets. I know to us, like in crypto, we eat twenty percent for breakfast. But <laughs> for traditional markets, like twenty percent is huge. So mm-hmm. uh, we could we could even retest uh, support all the way down here. So these are the two places I would look to. If uh, if this did not hold, I would really expect this. I think. Why don't we go ahead and uh, talk to our viewers and uh, and look at some chart requests? I think uh, I think that's a good broad market view. Yep, excellent review of the overall markets. Thank you, Alex. Let's see what we have in the live chat. All right, I see a comment here. Simply better says, just my opinion, but I think Bitcoin will see twenty six thousand again before it moons. Any opinions? Do you guys think will we will we see a pullback down to the twenties before we keep marching up, or you think this is it? Is it's this just impossible to know that right now? But I mean, th- the way that things are going right now, we can only tell it's going sideways. But we might get more bearish evidence. We might get more bullish evidence right now. I just don't think there's any way to know that as of right now. Yeah, we just we we don't know how far it's going to pull back to, or if it will pull back. But I, I will say that things are more bearish than they are bullish at this moment. I'd if if. I mean, if you held a gun to my head and you said, Alex, are we going to be down in a month from now or up from a month from now? I said, I guess we'll probably be down. Yep. And then hopefully you would let me go and not pull the trigger. But. <laughs> yep. Anthony in the live chat says, if people are screaming for 40K, the chances we are going to 30. Yes, that's one way of looking at it. Just like last week, everybody was uh, insisting really insisting we were going down to 20 and we just kind of. Uh, went sideways in the 30s hey, so we said specifically on air that i think well i said at least that we were going to go sideways so <laughs> here we have the sideways action let's see here um common lots make- of people will tell you that something's going to go up and down but not mm-hmm. many people will tell you it's going to go sideways there you go that's how you can tell a professional it's like hey, it's not going to do anything it's going to sit there sideways go do something go find something else to trade yeah Simply better says, so the dollar is rising and the new president will be sworn in. Something is bound to happen this week. I guess he means market-wise. Uh, crypto- I don't think so. I, you mm-hmm. know, Jesse I Stein, Jesse Stein, the author of Insider by Super Stocks, uh, you know, he pointed out that a lot of, a lot of uh, big-time stocks, they look very weak at these highs. And, hey, Biden... Uh, this stock market is no longer Trump's stock market in two days' time. Or, yeah. excuse me, three days' time. Thursday, it becomes Biden's stock market. And there's a huge narrative about, oh, how, uh, you know, oh, businesses are afraid of, you know, the Democrats being in charge. Or, oh, hey, it's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be a, uh, a what's a, a, a it's not a stalemate, but a uh, gridlock. You know, it's not going to be gridlock in Congress. So things are actually going to be get done. And, and 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 the stock market really likes gridlock. So the stock market didn't like that. And so the stock market's going to tumble or something like that. All I can tell you is that, guys, we've been looking at the weakness in these stocks for months. Mm-hmm. I've been mm-hmm. I've been pointing out that they were trading sideways. Uh, so you are going to hear a lot of narratives in the coming weeks if, if slash when we do dump. You know, I'll admit I could be wrong here, but the oscillators are saying what the oscillators are saying. Um, so I'm just going to stand by my technical analysis and say that I think the markets are, are, are going to be down over the next few weeks. And mm-hmm. and I think all the narratives that you hear, you should ignore because the markets have been saying that there's weakness for months. Um, and and the narrative is just what people tell themselves because they need to know why something mm-hmm. happened. And most of the time, those narratives are always a little behind, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep, they always follow like, the news. Like we're, we're doing it right now saying, like, look, these things look weak, guys. 
because the charts and the oscillators are telling us that. Like now everyone's going to blame it like the news on yeah, the presidential shift, the uh, just all those different factors, but they look weak already. So this isn't really that surprising. I for one I for one am a little bullish actually. I do think that um what we what we might need right now is stimulus spending, and I trust that the Biden admin might actually crank that up. I heard chatter this uh, weekend about them. Uh, um, New stimmy checks. Not just that. I just, I you know the last stimulus checks weren't that inflationary. I don't think I don't understand why people think these checks are going to be inflationary. People yep. are even more in debt, underwater on their rent. Mm -hmm. uh, people are paying down their their bills for good reasons and stuff. People are saving their money. No one, okay, sure, yes, some dumb people are going to go to Walmart and buy some TVs. But even that, how much do you think that's really going to help the economy? People going and buying a bunch of TVs at Walmart. This this money is not going to stimulate the economy the way people think it is. Mm -hmm. at, at, uh, studies have shown that when people get windfall money like a one-time stimulus check is they don't spend it the same way as they do like a regular income why because oh, it's one time it's like oh this is only going to happen every now and then let me save this for an emergency mm -hmm. i you know i think most people are are relatively and let's face it relatively responsible adults let's face it most people don't have that much to their savings i mean when, yeah. when they when they get this free check to them, the it's going to be more of a huddle mentality of like, well, let's save this for the rainy day because there's going to be a rainy day. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Why would yep. I go and spend this windfall windfall money right away? We're probably going to mm -hmm. get locked down. I'm probably going to not be able to go to work. I'm probably going to need to feed my kids. Mm -hmm. So so I I respectfully um, disagree that the stimulus check is going to. That first of all, the stimulus check is going to do much at all. But even the rest mm -hmm. of the stimulus is going to help all that much. I mean, even if you're a small business, are you going on a hiring spree right now because you got uh, you got uh, a grant or anything like that? No, you're saving for a rainy day. The economy is not back to normal yet. You're not going to go on a hiring spree, and and, and what you're going to have people sitting around your building serving who the people who aren't showing up to your business because the economy is not normal yet. Mm -hmm. I just I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see the arguments that people keep making, and and that makes me sad. I I don't want it to be true. I don't want there to be, uh, you know, I don't want the markets to pull back. I want to keep making money on Bitcoin, and I don't want the people I know to be suffering and having a hard time paying rent and not being able to find work. But that's the way things really are right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, personally, Whether we like it or not, there's a lot of people struggling right now. Um. I mean, if we, I did hear something about potential student loan forgiveness and up to 2000 a month in permanent UBI. Now that might be a little more um, speculative. There's the maybe not concrete. Are fighting over whether it's going to be a $2,000 stimulus check or a $1,400 stimulus check. I don't see a UBI anytime soon. They've totally dropped Medicare for all. Any, any talk of that. By, guys, Biden is not a progressive. And... and and, and I, I think it's a horrible thing. Like I, I am like you know, I, I'm a, I'm a super progressive guy. I, I think Biden is basically like you know, he, he's, he's the closest to. Uh, I mean, he's. I mean, I guess they could have gotten Joe Manchin, but I mean, he's one of the most conservative Democrats. They could have, they could have fielded. Uh, so I just don't see the whole uh, super stimulus UBI money for everybody. Uncle Joe Biden is gonna is gonna sign even bigger checks over to you than than Trump is. I just don't see it, guys. I so and let's not forget that because of the filibuster rule, things in the Senate require sixty votes to pass, not fifty fifty. You only get a couple fifty fifties a year in the Senate. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes, Kamala Harris can help on those. A couple reconcili a, a reconciliation here and there, but for the most part, Republicans are still going to be able to block everything. All right. Well, let's hope it doesn't turn out that way. I got my fingers crossed for uh, okay. some next okay. level stimulus to hopefully come in and save the day. And at least fingers crossed. At, I wanted to for sure yeah. save the day for sure for sure. I definitely um, want people to stop hurting because it is definitely hard out there for even people that I know. So 
It is. Let's open up the, the, the taps and uh, let's give people the money that they need. And it'd be nice to get the economy back on the ground. But in the meantime, uh, yeah, fingers crossed for a uh, big, big payday, big stimulus delivery, big stimulus windfall that will hopefully keep these markets pumping for another six to 12 months. All right. Um, let me see here. Agency in the live chat says this is why UBI is bad and job guarantees are good. B flow. Uh, let's see here. Actually, you know what would be really stimulate the economy if all that stimulus money went towards hiring a bunch of a bunch of people to essentially be teachers to retrain people into new fields. Because the economy has to be like basically it's got to be redone. It's like, hey, why don't we spend some money and give it to people to work hard to teach other people to do new jobs? Mm -hmm. That would be great. I haven't heard anybody in either party suggesting something like that. That would actually, that would stimulate the economy. People would be working and people would be learning new jobs and there'd be new fields opening up. And, and it would probably create new fields in it of itself as that would progress, you know? What do I know, guys? I'm just a chart jockey. I just draw lines on stuff. Buy here, sell here. All yeah. right. Uh, quite a few comments coming through the live chat and uh, agency pointing out that uh, never in history has there been more over leveraged noobs in the broader markets. Indeed. Uh, Indeed. There are a lot of uh, a lot of people sitting at home looking for probably a new way to make money and it's uh, i'm sure robin hood is bursting at the seams with new users over the last year mm -hmm. and retail's basically piled in and the market has just been has, has been on a runaway historic uh run uh, pump or whatever and uh yeah very well set up for uh for a huge historic potential crash that wipes all these people out Let's see here. We just had a fifteen dollars super By the way, chat. I know we have a lot of new people watching. We don't want you to get wrecked, but having been new, I can tell you that new people do get wrecked in these markets. Mm -hmm. And if the markets are letting new people win, then that means the other shoe's gonna drop soon. Mm -hmm. That's that's basically what it normally means. Do All yourself right. a favor and learn how to trade before you even touch margin. Here we go. We've got a $15 super chat that just came through from Yes to Crypto, and they're saying regarding UBI. What do you think of UBI as a reason for masses to adopt FedCoin CBDC, i.e. they launch it along with a trade-in program for non-sanctioned crypto, discounts on taxes, etc. Yeah, I could see that as a potential rollout of uh, UBI yeah. would be under the condition that... Um, uh, people adopt a uh, fed coin, you know, or some kind of uh, digital well, I mean, wallet. That's, that's, that's how that's how China rolled out their first digital yuan test. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, digital ramp? Digital, digital ramp? One of them. Yeah. Um, I think it's the ramp. So. Yeah, and anyway. uh, it would be... Um, I, I think it should be good because I think one... Um, one of the things we're missing with the stimulus is direct stimulus to the people. You know, they get, the money printers get fired up and they it seems like the money has a real, real challenge getting to where it needs to go. Mm -hmm. It seems if- And going to dead people and there's just a bunch of issues. Yeah, if the Fed could, um, if the Fed could uh, generate these uh, the stimulus based on the Fed coin that easily gets distributed out to the people, on the surface of it, I would be inclined to think, you know what, this is an effective way to get the money out to where it needs to go, but hey, maybe, uh, maybe we guess we'll have to see how that actually plays out in in practice. All right, let's. Uh, we've we've chatted quite a bit here, and we got quite a few requests to get through. We've got about an hour left of the show, so let's let's start working through these. I've got a lot of requests logged from earlier earlier in the show, so we're ready. Lightning round. We are ready. All right, let me pull up the first one here. This one comes from uh, Vidush. It says, uh, can we look at XMR and Rose USDT pairs, please? Yeah, let's see what Monero's right. doing. XMR has just been... Uh, I think Monero looks amazing. pretty weak here on the weekly. I, I would say I'm expecting Monero to continue to pull back here. So we're right up against the weekly logarithmic trend line. So for those of you who don't know, there's two ways you can have your chart linear and logarithmic. So right now I have it on log scale. So everything is uh, 
if you had it in a normal price chat chart, everything would be curved upwards. So this is what linear looks like. Linear, log, linear, log. Bitcoin, log, linear, log, linear. So it makes it makes the size of all price movements equivalent. So this right here, even though this is three thousand dollars, or excuse me, this is a thousand dollars, this is a twenty-eight percent move. This right here is a twenty-eight percent move, even though it's thirty-five hundred dollars. Why? Because it's a logarithmic scale chart. Okay, so for those of you who did not know that, now you know that, you've been informed. So this uh, logarithmic trend, which is, you know, it's a parabolic trend on a linear chart. It would be curving upwards. We're breaking this curve trend. Or, or looking like we are going to, rather, I should say. Below the daily baseline, our oscillator's low. We don't have any momentum. Overall, I think things look really bearish for XMR right here. Let's look at the Bitcoin pairing. Kind of weak looking at this spot. Um, you know, we could... Sure, we could bounce right here, but I would expect us to, to you know, retest some of this slow, right? Mm -hmm. It's not looking the best. It's been uh, pretty sideways here since I entered. I'm about 7%. Uh, uh, this is the only yeah. position that um, has gone negative on me, so I'm still kind of yeah. just waiting for XMR to do something. Yep, yeah, we're below zero on our oscillator. We're curved under. Everything's telling us to stay out of XMR for right now. So we're just going to listen to our uh, indicators. Leave it alone. I think I saw a crypto bull earlier in the live chat ask if we're still in the XMR position that Jason mm -hmm. posted to the group. I think the answer is yes, still in we're still in it. 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 might be a, It might be an early exit signal today. I just have to wait till the end. Uh, I have to wait till close. I think uh, depending on your entry, I would just leave Rose alone here. Rose does look like it's going to pull back and retest uh, five and a half to six cents. So I wouldn't be surprised to see us wick back down into this area. But I think Rose will will hold the trend ultimately. We'll, we'll pull back down and then and then recover back over it. So if you're looking for an entry, I, I wouldn't enter here. I would wait for a pullback back towards. Uh, back towards this resistance in this spot. And uh, and then ultimately, if you're already in it, like maybe from down here, or if you're from down here, then congratulations on your iron hands. But uh, then I would just I would just hold on because uh, most likely we're just, we're gonna keep making new highs here and it looks good. It's a strong weekly chart. Um, what's next? All right, hold the door on Rose. Let's look at what we have. Hold the door. Hodor, 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 and full effect on the rose play, and uh, maybe the same with Monero. But we'll wait, wait to the end of the day for that one. Here we go. Next one comes from Bird in the live chat. Bird asks, "Neo's looking good. Solid breakout. Can we look at Neo? Yeah, let's see what Neo's doing. Yeah, just the talk of the town. Okay, so this is the weekly breakout. kind of breaking out today no wonder everyone's talking about it yeah well at this point it kind of missed the boat on it for right now i would wait for some other kind of pullback uh, uh maybe we didn't miss the boat i can see an argument to be made for a continuation long signal at the end of today i take that break of the high right here yeah, okay. I would enter Neo here. I would I would wait till the end of the daily close. Hopefully we pull back some of this right here. And if uh presuming that it doesn't somehow like close all the way down here or something like that, then we'll probably take this as a continuation long today. Looks good. Hmm. So this is the this is the resistance level we're breaking. So you can see we've got pretty clear skies above us right now. So uh, first place I'd be even looking to take profit is like 42 bucks. Maybe 40. Essentially, you know, resistance here, resistance here. So we're looking for resistance again. 
Okay. What's next? All right, Bird. Shoutouts to you and the Neo request. Boy, Neo, I remember when that was above a hundred dollars at some point during the last bull run. Why? Oh, why? Did I not sell my Neo at $100? <laughs> I remember picking it up below three when it was still called Ant Shares back in the day. Yeah. What was I thinking? All right, I've learned my lesson. I now take profits when I'm up 10, 20x. With that said, <laughs> let's move into the next question. This one's from Boris Bitcoin. Hey guys, thoughts on Neo? We just did that and uh, privacy perp. We did privacy perp right at the start of the show, so yep. big. All good check those out a little earlier uh if you're tuning in late and you missed the earlier analysis right after the show we're going to update the video with uh timestamps so shout out to crypto bull yep crypto bull doing a great job on the timestamps and uh, makes it really easy to review uh, all our charting of the day this way what that's if you like really easy to review charts be sure to like and subscribe to our video there you go Solid advice there. Let's uh, look at this one from Oil Kemp in the live chat. Uh, or sorry, Ollie Kemp. And he says, watching these alts is depressing while I'm stuck in band. Can we look at band, please? This is why you position size appropriate, man. Don't put all your eggs into one basket. So you have capital on the side to take these other positions. Yeah, I hear you. Um, I'm also in a band position, although I'm not all in on band. Uh, but uh, yeah, it is just kind of languishing here. Uh, I think for right now, there's not much for us to do. Uh, we don't have a sell signal on the daily. On lower time frames, uh, we're actually starting to reset on the 12 hour right here. We're just, you know, kind of trading sideways as our oscillator curls down here. Yeah, for right now, uh, it looks like band is probably still worth hanging on to. If we did curl back under, then maybe I, maybe then I would consider selling it. But we still, we still got our trend. Yeah, and based off price, you're likely at least a little bit up. Yeah. So I'm hoping the band will will follow link soon. Yep, band might just be a couple days behind a link, and that's all. So. I wouldn't give up on your boy band just yet. Uh, Alex, quick. Oh, never mind. It looks like you fixed it. Uh, in that case, let's uh, let's continue. Uh, Shoutouts to Dan in the live chat. He says, "I just tuned in. It's been a while, Jet." All right. Well, welcome back, Dan, and Glad to have you back. thanks for tuning in. All right. Let's see here. Uh, Crypto Bull pointing out to the stream view numbers. We peaked around 154. Yeah, we've, uh, we're getting solid viewers coming through. Maybe a sign of the markets and how hot things are getting here in the crypto mm -hmm. kitchen. Let's see here. Uh, Animesh Ganguly in the live chat puts in his prediction. 31st of January, Bitcoin, 48,000. You heard it here, guys. Animesh in the, grand. Yep, Animesh claiming Bitcoin at forty-eight thousand by the end of the month. We'll uh, we'll have to come back in the, in a couple of weeks and see if the prediction was on point. Uh, Crypto bull pointing out use that risk calculator that CC offers. Yes, the risk calculation tool is invaluable part of what we teach here. Mm -hmm. That and quadruple. All right, couple more requests pouring in. So let's get back to the to the list of requests we've got. Next one is um, several people requesting link. Did we we didn't do link yet, right? Nope, not yet. All yep. right, Mini Ninja and Lucas Be Begard in the live chat, both asking for link USDT. Okay. It's nothing to do here, man. Uh, you're if you're in it, I would just stay in it. It's made a new all-time high. It's going to keep making new all-time highs. That's kind of how it goes. Uh, there's uh, yeah, there's really no signs of weakness right now. Four hour could pull back towards twenty dollars again, but I don't really consider that bearish. So uh, for right now, it looks like it's just kind of sitting, hovering above uh, support before it takes off. I wouldn't do anything. All right, don't do anything on Link just yet. Let's move into the next one. I like it when these things are brief. Um, this one is from Ron Legato, and he's asking for keep. 
USD keep coin. Let's see here, keep coin. Let's see what markets this thing. This is the keep network. Nice is... looking here. Keep an eye on it. Yeah, it's a Uniswap volume leader. Actually, this is probably more true. It looks good for continuation, man. Yeah, not much data, but you'd have a clear break of trend there. Yeah, if you're in it, I would just hold on. Uh, if you're not in it, then uh, you could take it as a breakout trade, but I don't know how long it might sit here before it keeps going. Overall, though, I, I'd rather be long than short, so... All right. I think that concludes Alex's thoughts on keep. Keep on yeah. keeping on, I guess. Keep on keeping on. Yep. Ride it up. On. Ride it up, guys. It's uh, alt season. This is what we're here for. Surf the fat gains. Wabbit season. All right. Uh, next request comes from S. Hyatt in the live chat. Can we look at GRT, please? Looking to buy a bag. Oh, Here might have missed your opportunity. You might be a little late to the party, buddy. Mm -hmm. Had quite the weekend. Yeah, this is just not a place to buy. At, at this point, you can you can look to buy a break of uh, of 70 cents if we close above 70 cents then you can buy but for right now i would probably expect to pull back towards like 38 cents maybe 50 cents or something like that and it to the win it yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't buy resistance like that so nothing to do with it for now but then uh but if you can't get a pull back towards here then 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 it could make sense The trend is getting a little parabolic. What's next? All right, shout outs to S. Hyatt. Let's move into the next request. We still got about a dozen more coins on this list here. Next one is uh, ETH1 uh, says, hey guys, uh, can you suggest a good position to enter for a long run on Ethereum? So ETH1 yeah. wants to get a nice long entry for the long term on Ethereum. Any, any advice you could give him? Um, wait for a big pullback. I, I pointed out some places where Ethereum may pull back too, but I'm not here to give you guys entry prices. Yep. Um, I would just say if you're that worried about it and you do believe in it, just start DCAing into it every week or every month. Yeah. You're going to, you're going to get an average price that's better than what you're thinking right now anyway. So just DCA, man. Yep. Solid advice. Uh, look back at the timestamps when they're up and look at Alex's uh, Ethereum analysis. He'll give you an idea of what's ahead. Probably keep you from FOMOing in. And uh, yeah, For Jason. What it's worth, uh, lower time frames. You know, we broke uh, we broke this downtrend, so we could retest the uh, the top of the could retest the top of the triangle here, or maybe we'll even break up, retest the highs before we break down. So. You never know what's going to happen, and then something happens. <laughs> yep. And if you're nervous and you don't know what to do, dollar cost average. Just like Jason mm -hmm. said, it's probably your best bet, um, especially in the middle of a bull cycle. You're going to be waiting for that pullback, waiting for the pullback. That might never come. So uh, your best bet is buy a little bit now, buy a little bit more next week. And then eight mm -hmm. weeks from now, you might have averaged in at a very uh, respectable it's gonna price. It's going to build a lot faster than you think it is. And don't worry yourself about like when when you do you buy and then you see big dips just think of those as buying opportunities man. you're just getting a discounted price on something that you want to ha have for the long term so. indeed indeed especially since eth one's asking about a long term run yes that's probably the best mm -hmm. thing you can do dude just just dollar cost in and, and uh enjoy simple. the ride yep for sure all right let's move into the next one this is from david rice can we look at zill btc ask david of course And that ZRX call, I didn't even have time to pull my TP3. It just whipped through all of them. Wow. I think this is really bullish on Zill Bitcoin. As you can see, we've got to break a trend. We trained sideways for a little while. Now we're up. I want to take it at least to this area right here. 
to like 275. So I don't know. We, we may pull back and retest 190, 193 again. If we do, that would be a great place to enter. Great but we may not. I, I see sellers are just really exhausted right here. As you can see, there's like no sellers left. We tried and to sell back down here and we just kept going. So Momentum's beginning to build as well, as well as a rising explosion level. So you know that the Bollinger Bands are uh, starting to separate. So we might, we're likely to see some volatility here. Okay. Uh, so yeah, Zill looks good. And then Zill USDT is... Look at that. We broke the downtrend. We're also starting to trend up right here. That looks like a more opportune signal, but you're not getting anything out of WADA. Yeah, WADA's not there. And uh, here, let's see. We don't have the baseline on right now. We're still below the baseline. So actually, um, this is telling us to just stay out right now. So I, I'm going to listen yeah. to the baseline and WADA. And for right now, we're just retesting the highs. The Bitcoin pairing is really interesting looking. Uh, but at least for the USDT pairing, I guess if Bitcoin were to pull back here, then even if the Bitcoin pairing moved up, we could still lose USD value. Yep. So yeah, for mean, now, it's not there. A, could be looking at a swing failure, just not enough yeah. evidence there to take any kind of position. Yeah, the good news is that if we did break above the uh, daily baseline here, then at that point, I think WADA and our oscillator would be there, and then we could take the long. Mm -hmm. uh, what's next? All right. Thank you to David Rice for the Zill request. Moving into the next one. Uh, let's see here. I got quite a few left still for everybody uh, who's pushing in requests now. Stand by. We'll get to them shortly. But in the meantime, let's uh, let's do the ones that were posted earlier in the show. This next one comes from NCAP Futures. RLC USDT, please. Uh, Luke Rank. I have had my eyes on RLC2. Uh, I've got a small bag of it. I bought towards the end of last all season, which means it's underwater. Um, <laughs> so let's, yeah, let's pull it up. Sorry, I was just, uh, I was just putting Re more juice into my vape thing. So, um... RLC. There we go. I think it looks strong. I I I'm I'm holding onto my bag still. I like it here. You might not necessarily want to buy resistance in this spot if you're looking to buy right here. Um, but if you're still in it, I would keep holding on to it. it I know it's lagging a lot of the uh, a lot of the other DeFi, but um. I am hoping it will catch up here. Sometimes and that's an I, opportunity. Yep. I am hoping it will catch up here. And at the very least, uh, the daily chart is telling us there's no reason to doubt that it might. The weekly yep. chart looks good here too. Break of the weekly trend. As you can see, we retest it. We're holding. Mm -hmm. I think everything is uh, everything is saying that there's no reason to worry right now. Which is good because, like I said, I'm also in this. So. What's next? All right, looking pretty good on the RLC. Hank tight and cap. Moving into the next one. This is GRT. This comes from JG in the live chat, uh, one of our I channel supporters. We, uh, we did indeed. All right, so we did look at the graph. Uh, he did post uh, like six requests in one. If you have time, please take a look at a couple. So I'm going to mention his. Uh, request list and you pick one or two to do all right first one is phala never heard of it p-h-a-l-a -A. next one's ramp next one is rev with a double v then we got rook a-l-b-t which is albright a-k-t and finally arch a-r-c-h oh it wow that's a lot of uniswap tokens okay tell you what let's go on, go on over to chartex and we'll look at them i know a lot of those are actually really bullish charts so some of them I have been looking at. A couple of them I haven't. We'll, we'll run through them. I, I don't mind showing you guys these charts. They're, yeah, they're right. really good. We got Alex excited. Yeah, JG, real treat for him today. All right, here's Rook. So as you guys can see, Rook has been very strong. Uh, right now, I would suggest that Rook looks like it's ready for a pullback. We're getting a very strong volume divergence in this spot. Look how much volume is on this up candle that didn't go very far. Where'd all that volume go? Well, it got absorbed by sellers is where it went. And then now today, we're looking even weaker. I would suggest that Rook 
probably is going to pull back in this spot. Maybe. Uh, lower time frames here, I don't necessarily see that. But we do have this rising wedge. So, hey, maybe we make another couple few highs, but I really think Rook wants to come back down and retest here. We do, like I said, we, we've got this really big volume divergence uh, on the daily, and that, that really gives me pause here. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing really for us to do in this spot except wait for a pullback on Rook. Uh, ramp. Okay. Ramp, we're also sitting at the high right now. Maybe you could buy a new high if we, if we broke up from here. But for right now, we've got this break of trend. So I really feel like we're just trading sideways out here at resistance and we'll we're likely to pull back on ramp here too i mean ramp had it ramp has had a very great both both ramp and rook have had a great few weeks they're, they're up like 200 percent let's uh look at this excuse me it's up like 600 percent. so <laughs> hey maybe ramp needs to pull back a little bit here before you get in uh and, and let's see let's see what what this pullback would be if it pulled back down here don't you do it a good 70% pullback, and that would not be unheard of for a parabolic trend that went 600%. So, 70% yep. pullback, continuation. What else was he look, asking about? Uh, he Ramp. had, yep. Ramp was one. Um, That's literally what's on screen. Continue. Rev with a double V, R-E-V-V. -V. Heard, heard of Rev, Rev. is that Revolut? No, it's just rep. Okay. Um, there's nothing really for us to do right now. We're back underneath resistance. This is our less parabolic trend. It's the more parabolic trend is broken. I think we could stand to come back down, retest uh, resistance, turn support, and that'd be perfectly normal. I just don't, I just don't see buying here right now. Uh, maybe if we broke back up, then it would make sense. Until then, I'm not interested in buying resistance. You just don't long resistance, guys. So uh, yeah, we gotta wait on Rev. What's next? Finally, we got ALBT, which is I think Albright. Albright, yep, that's on my list. Cool. Albright has been really strong. I was. I was really waiting for a pullback here, and we just didn't get one. We just kept going. This is not. And like I said, guys, this is a logarithmic chart, so it actually really kept going. Uh, at this point, I, I really am not interested in buying this high. We've got a pretty strong trend here. It's even stronger. I would wait for some sort of some sort of more significant pullback on Albright. Otherwise, you know, it's just it's just gotten away. You, you'll look for another trade. It's a shame you missed it. Sometimes yeah. you miss part of the game. All right. Care to do any? So yeah, if you got a pullback to like 46 cents, then I think it could make sense. If, you, if we were back down here, we were retesting the line, but not up here, man. What's next? All right. Do you want to do any more of these uh, Uniswap coins, or you want to move on to the next one? Yeah, let's let's pop out a few uh, news, right? All right, let's let's get so these guys through. Guys are doing this charting on Chartex. This is a really great platform for charting Uniswap coins. I like it. Um, you know, I hang out in their Discord sometimes because I know the developer. I think he's a great guy. He's very responsive, and they're adding an awful lot of blockchain analytics. Uh, they've got uh, they've got whale tracking and uh, wallet tracking. Very interesting stuff. Yep, Chartex, solid platform in this space. All right, let's do a few more for JG. JG, you're lucky you got the green supporter, channel supporter status. We're certainly going to entertain all your requests today for that very reason. Uh, next one from him would be AKT and Arch. That would round it out. Arch, I have heard of, this is like... I think this also does what Rook does, uh, except it's a smaller market cap. That that may be true. I, I, I do not quite recall. Uh, there's nothing to do with Arch right now. This is just way too overextended for us in this spot. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. This this is 
questionable, this ascending wedge that I've drawn here. This is a, a little questionable. Uh, but we're still at a high right now. And I, I, I'm not really interested in buying un unless we're, we're back near some sort of support level, if that makes sense. Oh, didn't mean to do that, actually. Let's do this. Here we go. Yeah, for right now, uh, I just don't think there's anything for us to do. On lower time frames, maybe you could take this back to $2, but I wouldn't do that on Uniswap if I were you, man, with gas prices the way they are. And, and liquidity is, I mean, it's all right, but uh, you get yourself killed if, you, uh, if you're off by a little bit. So I would just be really cautious in the spot. I'm not really looking to buy right here. Uh, it could be really interesting if we were to, uh, if we were to like, break up out of this pattern and we got renewed volatility. But I certainly wouldn't buy while we were while we were still inside. Yeah, you know what? This pattern makes a lot more sense on lower time frames. I'm not pushing it. This this makes sense. So, all right, nothing says uh, altcoin season like the Uniswamp creatures roaming about. <laughs> That's for sure. All right, let's uh, let's head into the next few because we still got about 30 minutes left in the show, and I've got quite a few requests, including Az Devon in the live chat says, "Is Neo done?" Yep, Neo was covered not long ago. Uh, if you check the timestamps after the show, you'll be able to quickly uh, rewind back and find it, Neo. But let's move it's into. Short. Looks good. Next one is for Mini Ninja, and he asks, "BZRX, please." Z R X. Going berserk. Going berserk. Oh, uh, why wasn't I paying attention? There was a buy zone here. Come on, Alex. You can't even listen to yourself. I know. I, I don't even have the saved. I gotta. There we go. Uh, for right now, I feel like we're just kind of at resistance. So here we've got resistance, 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 and then we're back up towards this area again. I'm not interested in buying unless we break it. That'd be really nice. Uh, this feels like a very, very, uh, very good break of trend right here. So I, I'm interested in it and I think it can continue. But because of where we are, I don't want to buy it unless we do get above it. Because we could always come back down and retest again. So, yeah. For right now, I would just hold off unless we got a break of, like, 36 cents. What's next? All right. To BZRX. Looking good. Let's, uh, I'm going to highlight real quick. We have yes to crypto which is kind of a new name to the chat, but he's already joined as a supporter. So he's got the green supporter status in the yes chat. You, so buddy. yeah, thanks to Yes2Crypto, much love, and thank you for your support. It does go a long way around here. Next request comes from um, Onyeku Charles. What's your view on Utrust token? I don't know if I've even heard of the Utrust token. Uh, I can tell you my view of the chart, but I cannot tell you my view of the project because I'm a technicals guy, not a fundamentals guy. You'll have to ask someone else about that. I mean, it's been around since 2017, and it looks like it's been waking up recently. Utrust is a payments processor that enables merchants to accept crypto. In addition to fiat currencies, the company also offers consumer-facing products such as Hold. All right, so payment processor type crypto. What were your thoughts on the chart, Alex? It's good in this spot. Look at the weekly. We finally got a break of the weekly downtrend. And then you have a close and um, that's that wick to the downside, but then you close the second one back up there. So that tells me that you're definitely gaining support. That trend is most likely broken. Yeah, on the weekly, we could still come back down towards this area a little bit. But overall, uh, if you're buying here on Utrust, I think it could make a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. 
as far as the daily goes, there's not much for us to do. There was a continuation long signal we got back here, but we just kind of traded sideways since then. I think it's really the weekly that, that looks interesting here on uh, on UTK. This uh, this nice reversal right here. You could at least take that towards uh, 900 cents, 1,000 cents, that area. Uh, okay. What is next on our agenda? All right. Thank you to Mr. Charles in the live chat. Uh, we got 26 minutes left in the show. Let's get through the next few. All right. This one comes from Jezacoin. Could you guys take a look at Maha Dow? I grabbed the small bag at $8, wondering when another good TP level is now that I have my initial investment back. Maha Dow. Let me quickly look that up. No, I got it. It's a USWAP thing. Gotcha. Some, uh, 200 million dollar market cap not bad yeah you need more evidence well the market cap is supposedly only 16 million with what's been released i think so you gotta think of uh you know actual float the float supply. indeed i think it looks pretty weak on lower time frames here uh because of how well it's held this channel i would be a seller near the top of the channel And a buyer near the bottom of the channel as long as the channel has held. Yeah, for right now, especially with sellers really stepping in in this spot, I'm not super interested in it right here. Uh, if we do, if we did break up, that, then it would be really interesting. I do like that we've held this, uh, this uh, resistance turn support right here. But we're still curled under on the 12 hour. I just, I just can't see buying this resistance level right here. Like I keep saying, like guys, don't buy resistance. Buy a break of resistance, even if you got to buy it a little, a bit more expensive. That's cool. What you get for the certainty, uh, the the extra edge on the market that you know it's not going to dump against you is well worth it. It's well worth the wait. So according, to wait according to Jezza, they bought at eight dollars. Would there be a take profit? Yeah. You would you'd keep in mind where would they have they they probably already would have taken at least one take profit. Um, yeah, this is an area that I would take profit in right yep. now is, is where I would be taking profit. I, I wouldn't necessarily dump here. Maybe we do hold this level. Maybe we just continue on and break upwards. But here at resistance on our on our third peak, I take some take some. Uh, you know, with sellers really stepping in strong, I would take some profit. Yeah. Yeah. Never. Never. Uh... A bad decision to take some profit off the table and move your stop to break even. Indeed. All right, Jezacoin, congrats on what looks like a solid trade so far mm -hmm. on Mahadao. Next one comes from Ryan. All the way over here. Very nice, very nice. Good hands. Mm -hmm. Well played. Next one comes from Ryan Harriet Wicks in the live chat. Idex, please. Idex. There's a name I haven't heard. Idex coin is really struggling here. Let's, uh, I bet Idex is available on Binance. There we go. Man, you know. We could get a reversal in this spot just because it has been so bearish for IDEX. Got to break a trend here. We do have a break of trend here. Okay. Okay. I normally for almost all of IDEX's history, I would have to I would say that you would have to be crazy to pick it up. But this is not necessarily a bad spot to pick up IDEX in. You might, be, you might be able to unload it around 140 sats. It's a good 40% gain. I can see it, you know, come back up towards this area. I'm not necessarily saying we're going to recover all the way back over here, guys. This is a very, very weak signal. But it is a reversal signal. We did break the downtrend. We are above the daily baseline. We are above zero on our oscillator. Wouldn't do to be too bearish. Remember, what goes down must go up goes down must go up what's next 
All right, that's IDEX done for Ryan. Let's move into the next one. I still got a sh quite a, quite a list of requests to get through. Let's hope we can get them all knocked out today. This one comes from JG in the live chat. How about we take a look at Zhao Gold, please? Oh, okay. Um, is that trading today? I bet it's probably trading today. CFDs, that's it. Looks like gold hit take profit one on our short today. That's nice. So we've been in gold for since last week. We entered a we entered a short right here. As you can see, we got this big weekly reversal candle uh, a couple weeks ago, and so I just I waited for a good daily entry and, and scored it for us. So our entry was at eighteen fifty five. And 1822 was uh, was our take profit. As you can see, our low today was 1802.955. So that's take profit one. Uh, I think there is not much to do in this spot right now. I would not short from here. We're kind of hanging out at this point of control at the low right here. We put in a wick into this uh, this liquidity down here of the low. So I actually wouldn't be surprised if we hung out sideways here and then broke up again. That would be interesting if that happened. As far as the weekly goes, though, the weekly is still telling us to be really bearish. So uh, there's just nothing to do right now. If, if you're in the shorts, then great. We're just going to try and stay in it. But I wouldn't long here and I wouldn't short from here either now that we've recovered back over this... Uh, back over this support level right now you, then you're kind of you kind of are shorting a bottom we've uh we were already down a couple weeks here now we got this wick i'd wait uh that's really all i gotta say on gold i think uh like i said you know the weekly i think this looks really weak here I mean, we're under the weekly baseline we got this big fuck you wick i say overall uh, i'd be not looking to be in gold and look look at this trend line look at that no bueno. Yeah, no bueno. No bueno. So, no goldo for Mio. All right. There we have it. That's gold for J. Uh, JG in the live chat. That's right, guys. We don't just trade crypto around here. We even post uh, winning trades in other markets like gold. So, shout outs to Alex and the gold trade, the gold short. You know, everything in crypto can be so heavily correlated at times. It's really good to be able to sneak into other markets and grab some and grab some extra trades for yourself. You know, stocks, forex, CFDs, and and guys, tr you know, don't don't over diversify in the beginning. I, all I traded was crypto for like the first two and a half years mm -hmm. that that I traded. But you know, eventually it got to the point where I could look at all the different markets, and be like, okay, that rule only took me like you know, an hour or so. I've got plenty of time to look at other markets if I wanted to. I was the same. Yeah. Mostly focused just on crypto. Indeed. Yeah, you, you will get there. There's no need to rush yourself if you are mm -hmm. not looking at other markets yet. And, and sometimes less is more, man. Especially in this, this gig. Indeed. But there are some traders that they just specialize in one or two markets, mm -hmm. and that's all they trade all year long. Like, they, they'll trade oil and cotton. Or, uh, you know, they'll trade cotton and uh, I'm thinking of Philly right now. They'll trade yeah. palladium and XMR. Uh, they'll, uh, yeah, they, you know, there's nothing wrong with specializing in just a few markets, but I like to have a broad view. That's just who I am. There's nothing wrong with being a specialist, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, let's head into the next few requests. I see people in the live chat uh, saying we jumped Cardano. No, we didn't jump Cardano yet. Cardano's still on my list, so hang tight, guys. We're getting to Cardano. I got to get a few of these other requests done first. I'm kind of trying to do them in the order that they come in. Next one is from Ivan X in the live chat. I, he says, Winky USDT, please. Winky wink. Winky wink. Looks pretty strong here. So we uh, last week we got a nice retest of the broken trend. We held above it. I feel like we're at resistance right in this moment. This kind of entire area right here. 
sort of feels like a resistance and support level. Where, where you Support, resistance, support, resistance. And here we are again, right? Okay, can you hear? I don't know who's listening to their voicemail, but it's too loud. Um, next thing, uh, yeah, so here we are at resistance again. I just kind of feel like I, I want a stronger break here. Or if I can score a retest closer to support, then I would feel safe. I don't really feel like we're, we're likely too likely to come down and retest down here again. We've already been down here once twice we traded down here feels like that's probably behind us but here in this spot we're still we're still at a point of weekly resistance if that makes sense so i would just wait a little bit longer and and if we broke up tell you what if we broke above this weekly high i would consider this resistance broken we'll, we'll reduce the size there something like that Okay. That's All wink. right. That's Wink for Ivan X. Shout outs to Ivan. All right, guys. Hang tight. I know you have a quite a few requests you wanted us to do. I'm just going to power through these next ones and we'll get right to them. This one comes from Yazin Mazrara. Please boldly finance. All right. Boldly finance. Let's take a look boldly at finance. boldly. There's something I've never heard of. All right. Well, do you mean boldly? I think it's Bondly. I didn't know Bondly. I've never heard of Boldly. Did I read that wrong? No. Oh, it is Bondly. My mistake, guys. I missed the. Uh, I missed that. It is Bondly. Mm -hmm. Uh, I just don't see what there is to do in this moment. Definitely feels like we're at resistance right now. We do break this downtrend and retest it. That's very bullish. That's good. Here's what this looks like on lower time frames. All right. I don't like that it is at resistance right now, but I think ultimately because of how uh, bullish the market has been, we should not ignore this, this break of trend right here. Mm -hmm. I think I would just really like to see Bondly recover over the 12 cent high right over here. If we do that, I think I'd be good to go on Bondly. I'd be a lot less suspicious right here. I just want one more high. One more high. All right. Yep. I think that's all I have to say on Bondly. All right. All right. Let's move into the next one. Tech Engine asks, Ela BTC. So Elastos BTC and IS. Elastos again. All right. Let's see. Is, is Elastos taken off finally? Yeah, it certainly would appear so. Well, right now, we're definitely at resistance. So, mm -hmm. resistance, support, resistance, yeah. resistance. Yeah, I think you've missed the movement. Here we are. Yeah, we're looking a little pullbacky here. Putting in uh, a divergence on the daily time frame. Bearish divergence. Uh, a divergence is when our oscillator diverges from price move. As you can see, price makes a higher high, but our oscillator makes a lower high. That is suggesting that there is hidden weakness in price here. Whoops. Whoa. Uh, did not mean to do that. Uh, what was I just looking at? Uh, no. Elastos. Elastos, okay. 
yeah, I would just say that there's nothing really to do right now. I would much prefer to buy on some kind of retest. Resistance support. So maybe somewhere down here. That could make sense. Because I don't necessarily feel bearish on it. I, we, However you want to look at it, we, we probably have a break of the long-term downtrend. Where were you drawing from? So yeah, wherever you want to draw from, like we've broken the downtrends, uh, but with the resistance overhead, this doesn't mean we can't retest down anymore or go more sideways. So there's opportunity cost to consider. Okay, what else is there? All right, Tech Dungeon <clears throat> also asked for ICX. Did we do ICX? Nope, I don't think so. USDT pairing. Looks really strong today. Making a new high. Breaking this high, breaking this high. Yeah, this is a long signal, man. Take it. I like it. Okay, breaking resistance here, here, here. New high, our oscillators pointed up, we're above zero. Watt is firing, we're above the baseline. Everything says I icon's good to go. All I've right. got nothing to complain about. No. Icon. Not even take it later. Icon firing, all right. We're heading yep. into the um, the last few. and We've got 10 minutes or so left in the show, so let's fire through these ones. I've got Ave on the list next. Fluffy Foo Fukins in the live chat says, thoughts on Abe if you got time, thanks. Uh, yeah, Ave has really petered out here. So this is a great example of candle, candle sizes showing you momentum falling. So look, big candles, big candles, medium candles, smaller candles, smaller candles. Petering out. Yeah, and, and look, the highs are lower too. Higher high, lower high, lower high. Let's look at lower time frames right now. Here we are. We've crawled below the four hour baseline. Well, three hours at least holding strong here. If we made a new high, then I would be willing to take it. But we would really have to break 200. We got to break 200. I'm not willing to take it below 200 because this this looks too much like it wants to pull back right here. So, mm -hmm. and if it did, I would probably look to pull uh, to catch it around maybe 140 or so. See this little bulge right here on our volume profile. What's that? It's this consolidation area right, right here. And so we'll just come back down, retest this consolidation area, maybe continue. Okay, what is next? All right, Ave's done. A few minutes left to get through these last ones. Next one is Stun Gun requesting Iota, please. Why Iota? Next. Hmm. Oh, that's why I had my thing right here. Just tell me this. It looks good, man. This is a nice little long signal. Actually, our continuation long signal was probably back here. But I wouldn't have taken it here because we were at resistance. So I, I do like the break of the high right here. Watt is firing. Our indicator is telling us everything is good to go. This is... Okay, so support here. This entire area kind of resistance here. I think you could safely take IOTA probably up to like 55, 60 cents. Feels like it really wants to trade back into this consolidation range again. After that, I'm, you know, I'm not really, uh, couldn't really say, but it looks strong. It does look strong here. All right, IOTA looking strong. Let's get to the next few. I do want to uh, do everyone's request. Before
before the show is up. Next one is Dan in the live chat with the uh, Nissan 300ZX Avatar. Once uni breaks $10, could you be ready for a parabolic run? What do you think, guys? Is uni about to go parabolic? Is uni about to go parabolic? It's kind of interesting here on IOTA. Very interesting. So I'm sorry, what was the other thing we were looking at? Um, <clears throat> Uniswap, or were you just looking at Uniswap? No, I was, oh, that you, was still IO. Yeah, my bad. So the question is, once we break what? Ten dollars. We Will we break ten bucks and go parabolic? I mean, I don't see anything special about 10 bucks. And if you ask me, we're kind of already a little parabolic. So there's this trend. Then we've got this trend. And we've got this trend. So yeah, we already are a parabolic. Um, the question is, are we going to pull back at $10? Or are we going to keep going? I would say at the very least on the daily time on the daily time frame there is no signs of a pullback yet. On lower time frames we're starting to get some possible sell signals, but uh, they're not necessarily anything to be worried about. We haven't broken any uh, parabolic trends. We're not even below the three hour baseline. So at this point there's nothing for us to do. I certainly wouldn't buy here, um, but uh, it's not necessarily saying that it it needs to pull back like some of the other ones we looked at. All right, guys, it's. And uh the bull season is upon us, and Uniswap could be very one uh, one of the ones that's gonna blow up from here. Fingers crossed. My uni bags keep doing what they've been doing the last few days. Next one is all right. I know a lot of people are waiting for this one. It's finally here. Super relax. Asking for what's up with Cardano. What is up with Cardano? Add a kid. Strong weekend on Cardano. I would suggest that, uh, you know, it's probably a great time to buy Cardano. We're kind of at a little resistance right here, but I'm more focused on this resistance that we just broke. So this has been strong resistance since September. So we crawled under in uh, early August or in late August, and then we're just stuck underneath 900 sats. All of October, we break down, we test it again in November, we break down, we test again in December. And then we just kind of hold here. We finally broke up. So I like ADA here on the weekly. Super strong. Like I said, we are at a little bit of a resistance level right here, but that's not necessarily something to worry about too much. USDT strong weekend uh, kind of not much for us to do here probably should have taken this continuation long signal that we had right here but I didn't see it I didn't happen to notice it that day so uh, yeah uh, there's just nothing for us to do right now if we were to retest the high right here and we put in a continuation long then I'd, I'd be really interested in taking it what's next all right Cardano is off the list get into the final few requests here because we are almost at the show ending about three minutes left in the show maybe if alex is feeling generous we will go into overtime and get these last few knocked out next one is z devon in the live chat asks can we look at an eos usdt please uh still trading sideways man i think you know that um there's just nothing really for us to do right here. Uh, I would even suggest that it may retest its lows again. EOS Bitcoin is still looking interesting, but still trading sideways at the lows. So I think there's a lot of signs that EOS could reverse soon in this spot. But all we see for sure is that uh, 
bearish momentum is decreasing. We can still trade sideways in this area for a little while. See, the weekly candles, big, medium, small, really small, super small, super duper small. And we are still holding above support here on the daily. So yeah, for right now, I don't think there's anything to do to EOS uh, unless we get uh, a better break of trend on the USDT pairing. Because even though the Bitcoin pairing is pretty suggestive here, um, if you lose USDT value on when you take the trade, then I, I don't really think that it's necessarily uh, a good trade, right? So for right now, I would just I would just sit on my hands for EOS um, and then. If we if we do break above uh, our high here, if we can get above like three dollars, then that could be a really good sign that it's time to enter again. All right, that's EOS for you. I think it's time to give up on EOS, guys. Just just forget it. It's, it's not necessarily time to give up on EOS. That EOS Bitcoin chart looks really good, but until it starts moving, then this is all opportunity cost, guys. It's just sideways. We're gonna yep. sit here for three months while you wait on the wall. So we'll wait for confirmation and then we'll take EOS and we'll do it with bells on. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I, I need a revenge trade EOS for 2018 for buying $15. Yep. So I would love to make some money off of EOS instead of lose money on it. But we're going to wait for a good signal, guys. You and me both, Alex, uh, <clears throat> should have moved your bags, your EOS bags into Polkadot. What were we thinking? All right. Well, let's revenge trade that EOS back up to all time highs, please. Um, all right, few left, even though we're kind of running low on time on the show. I do want to get through these. Alex, do you want to go into overtime, or do you just want to wrap it right about here? I'm willing to do, like, five minutes or so. Over, all right. I'm to do a few more so I'm charts, gonna, I don't want to go, like, like... In that case, I'm going to just name off the last uh, six coins on this list, and okay. you tell me which ones you want to do. We have Cosmos, E-Gold, uh, Nem, T-Fuel, Ripple, Stellar, and... Some Adam looks good ripe for continuation i would just keep holding if you're not already in it then uh yesterday was the day to get in mm -hmm. uh but today looks good for continuation too yeah it's making new highs right now adam looks good e-gold uh e-gold is suggestive but until we make a new high i don't necessarily want to oh we are making a new high today if we hold it then i would consider that a pretty good entry signal uh, even though our momentum is not there yet, which is fine. I mean, it was a small candle today, but if we're over resistance, then that's that's pretty good for us. We're likely to just, we would be likely to just keep making new highs right here. So, um, what's next? All right, uh, thank you. Uh, that would be Cosmos and Eagle out of the way. We took a quick look at Nem there. We do have people requesting Ripple and Stellar, so let's take a look at either or, please. Look at the Bitcoin pairing. Well, it's super volatile. Uh, I guess I like how the weekly is slowly starting to reverse here, but we don't actually have a weekly buy signal. Uh, daily time frame is almost there with a buy signal for us. Uh, we just didn't quite have it yesterday. We don't have volatility today. But we could trade sideways here for a while, guys, before we recover. So I don't know if necessarily NEM is there yet. I do like how we, we essentially retested the uh, previous resistance turn support here in this spot. As far as the USD pairing, uh, USDT pairing is going, let's do calculated by trading view. There we go. Yeah, right now NEM is just suggestive. Maybe we're reversing here, but we're still caught underneath the daily baseline. Uh, we're still uh, we're still kind of underneath trend resistance. And like I pointed out, the weekly on the Bitcoin pairing is still it's it's still just trading sideways. So I'm not necessarily sold on NEM yet. I I, I like that we've made some new highs here, uh, but there's there's plenty of alts that are doing that. So that's not necessarily mm -hmm. that much. 
All right, uh, that will uh, do it for Nam. Let me know if you still feel like looking at Stellar or Ripple. Um. Eh. Eh. All right. Getting delisted from Coinbase tomorrow on XRP. Well, uh, for the last week, we've just been uh, trading sideways on XLM, and there's I say there's still nothing for us to do here. I'm just not interested. Uh, we you know we just pumped like 300 percent. Now we're trading sideways. Maybe if we get a long signal, uh, but I just I just don't see it in this spot. XRP USDT. Nothing to do here. Uh, maybe if we uh, curl up again, that would be an interesting trade to take. But uh, we're below the 12-hour baseline. I would just not trade this, guys. It's just, just too much regulatory uncertainty around it. What would you do if they banned it? What would you do if the SEC was like, you know what, we decided that S that Ripple's not going to get the sweetheart deal that EOS gets? Ripple just goes, boom, instantly to zero. What would you do? laugh how sure are, are any of you guys lawyers are you guys professional lawyers how sure are you that that's not going to happen to ripple mm -hmm. you guys who are speculatively buying ripple at 28 cents because you know it's got a you know they'll deal with the case or whatever how do you know that it's not going to first test like five cents before the case is finally solved so i think i think it's just it, guys it's dumb it is a dumb choice to buy ripple at these lows when you don't know what's going to happen with the court case you don't know the law you're not an sec official you know with all this regulatory uncertainty it just doesn't make any sense to be in ripple over all these other alts that are pumping ripple hasn't moved mm -hmm. ripple hasn't moved ripple hasn't moved stay out of ripple guys ripple hasn't moved okay i have given you my ripple lecture what's next all right i think we are done guys i know right. we had a few people still requesting a few others guys but we did kind of use up our entire allotted time for today um make sure you hit that like button we just covered stellar mr alejandro ferrer in the live chat just rewind a few minutes you will see that we did stellar um yes to crypto points out something that i was actually going to bring up myself and that's alex ripple isn't only used in the u.s every other country has declared it a non-security yeah and this is where i also come in i think um there there's still even if the u.s deems it a security and there's trouble afoot here uh they, they have international aspirations and i'm not sure if that's going to be completely derailed by the sec ruling but i guess it, it still remains to be seen so I wouldn't call it completely dead, dropping to zero, even if the SEC rules against them severely. I, I do think they have enough international support to keep going. With that said, guys, I'm not looking to buy. Keep sucking up that hopium, buddy. I, I Look, why? But why? Why be in Ripple over any of the other alts that we looked at today? They're all going up. Ripple is just... Why? But Ripple why a, sit Ripple? But why? It's got why? a dedicated following. People are convinced it's the crypto mm -hmm. that will come back to rule them all. So okay. uh, I can't put my finger on it, but Good people luck. are absolutely in love with it. And we, if you know, if we completely shit on their heads, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna turn away. So yeah, I, I look, you know, I am also not a legal expert, so I, you know, I don't want to be a hypocrite and say I know that, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen with the Ripple case. But what I do know is that Ripple's not moving, and all these other alts are. Why be in Ripple? Why? What do you think mm -hmm. you're getting out of it? Well, yes, to what you're not getting is gains. Yes, to crypto points out, uh, it's in other countries, i.e., remittances is where it's used. Ripple's actually needed, not for the U.S. Oh, or Westerners who enjoy. Anything for its price. I'm not sure why Alex thinks I'm a... No, no, no. We're not saying you're a Ripple lover, yes, to crypto no, or anything. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not giving you a Ripple, Ripple lover. I, I'm sure that there are people who love Ripple who are listening, though, and I want to pose this question. Why be in Ripple? And maybe Ripple will move again someday, but it's not right now. Be in one of the other alts, guys. There's a lot of coins that look a lot better. Yeah. Yep. Go buy go buy Link or, or any of the other ones that made new all-time highs the last couple of days. You're going to be far better mm -hmm. served. Yeah, I for one, I'm a bit of a contrarian. As much as I'm not a Ripple fan, I've seen Ripple get dunked on so hard in the last couple of months that uh, it makes me start speaking my interest. I might actually add some Ripple to my bag once we get a sufficient big enough of a pullback. 
Um, but yeah, yes to crypto. No, we're not saying you're a Ripple lover. We're just talking in general, uh, probably because, you know, the XRP army has marched through our shores of quite a few times. Yeah, and uh, we, we, we deal with XRP like crazy around here, even though we're not the biggest fans of Ripple. But you know what? XRP, perennial favorite of crypto investors. So, you know, I'm going to... I'm gonna wait for the bigger pullback, guys. The I don't feel like the the ripple uh, drop has really come yet. So, call me when we when we dive below ten cents. Maybe I'll add a little ripple to my portfolio at that point. I, I do agree. Maybe maybe uh, the SEC chasing it off our shores isn't uh, the end of the world for ripple, but uh, we shall see. Um, so he's saying just looking at the chart blindly and not knowing it's ripple are you still saying not to buy yeah alex if yeah. you were to uh, remove the ripple uh ticker it looks from your bad, chart man it's a yeah. bad chart yes it still looks bad hello guys other coins are making new all-time highs and ripple is just hanging around the lows underneath the daily baseline underneath oh, excuse me it's above the underneath the 12-hour baseline underneath the weekly baseline it's like what more do you want no don't touch ripple don't touch ripple guys ripple makes no sense Mm -hmm. indeed even if we no even if we were to look at the ripple chart with uh with a blindfold on to you know at least in regards to the ticker probably still gonna say no big 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 red flags on the higher time frames mm -hmm. that's not how we trade around here guys but listen if you're a ripple favor if you're a ripple lover and you want to um you know you think your ripples going places just buy it just, all the way to zero yeah man just buy it up deep dollar cost averaging in like i said i'm personally going to dip my cup into the ripple waters come to sub 10 cents ripple all right and i mean lord knows there was a few opportunities if you were scalping this this sucker to make some fat gains a lot of so, volatility. Uh, uh, yeah but there was way there was those volatility in all the other alts except the alts other alts made new highs and ripple is just hanging around sideways for like two months so indeed yeah mm -hmm. but yes that's ripple for you guys don't want to turn off too many ripple fans in the audience but uh it is how it is i do want to wake them up <laughs> someone's got it yeah antonio says people are afraid to lose their money with ripple yeah yeah you know nobody wants to like you know if you've been a diehard committed ripple fan you've been you've been insisting on not buying bitcoin you and that xrp the is the future you, you feel like crap at this point you know it's just like and so you, you're going to double down on your ripple aspirations you know you don't want to admit you're wrong you don't want to admit that you should have been buying bitcoin this whole time you still want to yeah. insist that you know the world is heading toward ripple and uh, it's it's probably not easy to, to admit that you know you might have been wrong. Yeah, you're... you might end up attacking the Capitol building. Oh boy! Ooh, no. All right, let's uh, let's avoid getting into those topics on the stream oh, here. Yes, uh, and let's see here. NF Nefreshup Nefreshup in the uh, Twitch chat oh, asking, is anybody Twitch. here? Uh, probably not too many people watching on Twitch, but whoever's there, shout outs to them, including yourself, Mr. Nefreshup. So. Uh, listen, guys, we've gone almost 15 minutes over. It's been a great show. I'm sorry if we couldn't get to every last one of your requests, although we probably did most of them. So uh, for the people yeah, who requested SRK, T Fuel, uh, that's about it. Uh, we'll have to pick those up tomorrow. But in the meantime, go over to the Discord, discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com. That's where our community likes to rest. And uh, if you like what our analysts spit, if you like their style of trades, if you like what we do here, check out premium.crackingcryptocurrency.com. Um, our analysts do good work and they post signals uh, every day. And uh, we, we provide some sage guidance through these choppy... Had a hell of a weekend. Yeah, it's been great. And, uh, you know, we're one of the few groups out there, probably the only one, that posts their results on a somewhat regular basis, right? Uh, we're a little behind on the results that crackingcryptocurrency.com, but we're catching we're up. On it. It'll be we're done. Yeah, we're, we're working on it. And I can assure you that the last few months have been successful and profitable uh, as far as the results are concerned. You know, our traders do post up, um, you know, average out mostly winners. I put it this way, we're good at our job. Very good at our job here, guys. So even when we bag on Ripple, we don't mean to hurt your feelings. We're just trying to keep you out of trouble, guys. So... Um, it is tough love. I want you guys to make money. I don't want you guys. I don't want you guys stuck in charts like Ripple. Mm -hmm. Why? Why do this to yourself? I want to save you. Keep the emotion help, out of it. Help, help you. Yep. Got to. You can't help. 
can't help you if you can't help yourself and sometimes you just got to put the the losers to bed and refocus your efforts on uh taking winners and if you have trouble uh locating and isolating winners uh potential winners potential trade setups uh yourself well this is where uh our group comes in handy uh over at premium.com cryptocurrency.com you can sign up and get a bit of a trading education learn how to trade like a pro develop a system like a pro approach the markets like a pro Alternatively, if you're not prepared for that yet, you just kind of want to follow along for now, you don't want to miss this crazy alt cycle opportunity, well, that's where the signals come in. Do check out our premium signals. I'm telling you guys, I don't want to oversell it, but our traders have been on fire. The proof is in the pudding. Ask any of our yeah, premium... It's good. Yeah, ask any of our premium members. They will tell you much of the same. Our guys are just on point. They're just posting killer, killer setups all the time. And it's not just in crypto, like gold that we covered earlier in the show. Our guys even post uh, solid trades in other markets as well. Forex, so traditional, pretty much cover the, the whole spectrum. All right, so yes to crypto, just pointing out he's trying to save you from going to the devil and make sure you don't bring your bias to the chart. I'm not yep. sure if he's saying that or because he's got quotations around it, so maybe Fire he's par- and brimstone. Fire and brimstone, guys. I'm here to take you to the promised land of gains. <laughs> I love and that. Ripple is a false idol. It's a false idol. There you <laughs> have it. There you have it. All right. Um, shout out to the S2 Crypto once again, active in today's chat and joined us as a as a channel supporter. So it's always it's always cool when we can convert a newcomer that quickly to be a premium supporter. You know we're doing yeah, something super right here. Appreciate it, man. Yep, we do things a certain way around here, and it takes a certain type of uh, trader, aspiring trader, a certain type of investor to appreciate. Uh, our style of what we do out here you know we're just cold we're like terminator when it comes to approaching the charts <laughs> and to the markets all right guys goblin moblin says thanks guys and i think i might join today yeah for sure join the premium dude or uh i don't support think you're gonna channel. regret it baby no i don't i, really I think don't. you i think you will not dude this is just a solid community of people who's uh eyes on the trading ball every day all right with that said we're going to wrap up for now we will be back tomorrow for a tuesday edition of breaking bitcoin market update in the meantime thank you all so much for joining us be sure to hit like or subscribe before the show ends mm-hmm. if you guys like the content that we're putting out make sure to join the discord um we can only do this because of you guys so the more love you can show the longer we can keep doing this because i think uh, we have a hell of a future ahead of us with what's coming to the alt markets and uh we're gonna try to nail it the whole way yep that's discord.crackingcryptocurrency.com that's right guys gotta capitalize Goodbye. gotta capitalize on what might be once in a lifetime once in a four year opportunity it's not every day that you wake up to 20 percent gains across various markets crypto is a unique opportunity and this is a unique time in crypto history so thank you all to being here we really do enjoy having you guys along for the ride the best way you can really capitalize on what's coming up is uh, joining our premium, like we said. But with Just that said, me. guys, time to move to wrap. Much love to everybody. You know who you are. I've mentioned you all repeatedly in the, in the live chat today, and we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Trade much love. everyone. Thanks. Cheers, guys.